Hey there, my name is Gary Sims, and this is Gary Explains. Now, over the last few months, we had three new processors announced at System on a Chips. First of all, we had the Google Tensor that's in the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro. Then we had the announcement of the MediaTek Dimensity 9000, and then we had the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1. They're all very different chips from very different companies, but the question is, how do they compare with each other? Well, if you want to find out more, please, let me explain. So these are all important processes that have recently been announced. That's three of them. We're waiting for a fourth one. That's the next Exynos processor from Samsung. But at the moment, let's concentrate on the three that we do know about. Uh, chronologically, that was the Google Tensor, then the Dimensity 9000, and then most recently, the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1. Now, all of these uh, processes are going to be inside of phones that you can either get now or certainly will become available in 2022, and they will be available all the way through 2022. And you as a consumer, you get to choose what phone you buy based on things like the camera or based on the battery life or based on the screen or based on the processor and what it can do. So let's have a look at the differences between these three processors and see which one comes out on top. So a system on a chip is made up of lots of different components. You've got the CPU, you've got the GPU, you've got the AI acceleration, you've got things like the 5G modem, you've got media decode. So let's look at all the different components and see if we can get kind of a picture about the differences between these three processors. Now let's start by looking at the CPU, that's the central processing unit. Now the Google Tensor is certainly different to the other two. It contains two Cortex-X1 cores, two Cortex-A76 cores, and then four Cortex-A55 cores. So it's a 2 plus 2 plus 4 setup, very different to the 1 plus 3 plus 4 setup that we'll look about in the other two. Also here we're looking at cortex X1, which is really what you found in the Snapdragon 888, for example, and other processors from earlier in this year. Google have gone with that, even though we're now at the end of 2021 and immediately about to go into 2022, which means it is already kind of like six to eight months behind everybody else. And when it comes to the other two, both of them have got one Cortex-X2 processor, three uh, Cortex-A710s, and then four Cortex-A510s. Now, I've mentioned lots, lots of different core types here. X1, X2, A76, A710, A55, A510. These are very, very different cores. And I've got videos about all of those different cores here on this channel if you're not up to speed about all the differences between them. But let's put it this way. The X2, the A710, the A510 are the latest generation that you can get from ARM. Now, the big difference in the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1 and the Dimensity 9000 is the Dimensity 9000 has higher clock speeds. So the X2 core is clocked at 3.05 gigahertz, whereas in the Snapdragon, it's clocked at 3 gigahertz flat. Now, that's a minor difference, but the real difference comes when you get to the A710 cores. In the Snapdragon, they're clocked at 2.5 gigahertz, whereas in the Dimensity 9000, they're clocked at 2.85 gigahertz. So when you're coming to certainly some multi-core work where the X2 core isn't being used or it's being in used in conjunction with it, then you're going to get greater speed for sure out of the Dimensity 9000. Now, we will look at some benchmark numbers for the CPU and the GPU in a moment, but let's just talk about the GPU quickly. Now, they're very, very different GPUs in all three of these processes, and this could be a deciding factor for many people. In the Google Tensor, you've got the Mali G78 MP20, so it's a 20-core G78. So again, that's the slightly older generation. Compared to the new generation that you get in the Dimensity 9000, that's the Mali G710. In this case, it's an MC10, so we're looking at kind of a 10-core setup there. And in the Snapdragon, we have the Adreno GPU. No numbers given, no meaningful information, just it's the Adreno GPU that you get in the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1. We assume that when you have a Snapdragon 8 Generation 2 and it says Adreno, that it will be a different Adreno, but we don't know by how much we don't know any kind of numbers about it. All we can do is look at the benchmarks and try to work out where it fits in the overall plan of things. And before we look at those benchmarks, let's just quickly mention the process node. That's the manufacturing process used to actually build these chips. When you start with the Google Tensor, that's built using Samsung's 5 nanometer process. Now, if you don't know what 5 nanometer process means, I've got several other videos here on this channel, particularly look up 
uh, my video how uh, chips are made, how processors are made, and that will go into that in a bit more detail. Now, when you go over to the Snapdragon uh, 8 Generation 1, that's also built using Samsung's process, and that's now Samsung's 4 nanometer process. Now, it really isn't technically a 4 nanometer process. It's really their 5 nanometer process, kind of like the second or third generation, and they've tweaked it a little bit, get a greater uh, transistor density in it. And so for marketing reasons, they've now called it 4 uh, nanometer, but you might consider it, you know, 5 nanometer plus 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 or something like that, depending on how you're familiar with some of these namings. Now, the big difference is when you get to the MediaTek Dimensity 9000, it's using TSMC's 4 nanometer process. Now, basically, let's just put it out here on the table. TSMC's 4 nanometer is better than Samsung's 4 nanometer and better than Samsung's 5 nanometer in terms of transistor density and in terms of power efficiency. So the overall winner in terms of the manufacturing process is definitely the Dimensity 9000. Now, the Dimensity 9000 isn't really readily available inside of any device at the moment. Neither is the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1. However, Qualcomm did build their reference device, which some people were able to test. So some of these numbers I'm giving you are kind of best guesses uh, so we can see what the performance is going to be. We do, of course, know what the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro can deliver. So let's start with them there. If we look at Geekbench single core, so in this case, it's going to be the X1 processor that you've got inside of that Google Tensor. Single score, you're getting a score about uh, 1,040 for the Google Tensor. And then the Snapdragon reference device that was shown off at the Tech Summit, that can score about 1,200. So there we can see a big difference between the, the X1 processor and the X2 processor, a big leap in single threaded performance there. Now, because the MediaTek 9000 has, uh, Dimensity 9000 has a slightly, slightly higher clock speed on that X2, I'm expecting the Dimensity 9000 to give more. Now, when it comes to the multi-threaded test for Geekbench, this is a CPU test that runs across all the threads simultaneously. All of these processors are octa-core, but what we're seeing, because you've got those Cortex-A76 cores in there, that the overall speed for the Google Tensor is just 2,800. When I say just, because if you compare that to the Snapdragon uh, uh, 8 Generation 1, we're looking at 3,700. So quite a significant difference between the Google Tensor and the new Snapdragon processor. And this figure I'm about to give you comes from MediaTek itself, not independently verified, but MediaTek are claiming over 4,000 uh, for the Geekbench uh, score for multi-threaded on the Dimensity 9000. So in terms of single threaded score and in terms of multi-threaded scores, if those numbers are right, the Dimensity 9000 is the clear winner. And this seems to be backed up by the Antutu scores. Now, of course, remember Antutu is CPU and GPU, maybe more slightly GPU than CPU. Now, the Google uh, Tensor in the Pixel 6 will give us a score of around 780,000. I'm kind of rounding this up because they kind of do go up and down depending on who's done the testing and how they've done them. Now, compare that to the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1, that will score uh, 977,000 on Antutu. So again, a big difference there seen between the Google Tensor and the Snapdragon. Now, again, the number I'm about to give you is unconfirmed from MediaTek, from some leakers, but the current thinking is that the Dimensity 9000 can score over a million on Antutu. So if you take the uh, Geekbench single threaded score, the Geekbench multi threaded score, and the Geekbench and the Antutu score, in every single case, it looks like the Dimensity 9000 is actually the winner. Now, of course, it's not always just about CPU uh, and GPU. There are other things that are becoming more and more important. For example, machine learning acceleration. Now, again, all three processes take a very different approach to machine learning. Now, Google are really emphasizing the machine learning capabilities of the Google Tensor. That's why it's even called the Google Tensor. Tensor is a word that's borrowed from the machine learning uh, domain. And so the, basically they're saying that the machine learning capabilities of the Google Tensor are exceptional, and they probably are. They probably are. And the question, of course, is how much are they used? And that's really the big issue with machine learning today. Although you know, all the different companies are saying it's better, it's faster, it's more efficient. The question is how much is it being used? Now, yes, for things like photography, for videography, it's definitely being used across all three platforms. For voice recognition, it's definitely being used. Is one better than the other? Lots of good reports from Google Tensor from the Pixel 6 saying it can do offline recognition of voice and so on very, very efficiently, very, very quickly without having to send any data up to the cloud. So that's certainly a good point. But the MediaTek, 
also has its own uh, APU. It's now a better one that was in the previous version, but a greater performance, greater efficiency. And also the hexagon process inside the Snapdragon, that's also uh, increased the machine learning capabilities better than what was in there before. And also applies to uh, photography and to videography so that you can get computational things like bockers and out of focus backgrounds and kind of object recognition, and object detection. In fact, I've got a video about all of that here on this channel. When it comes to media decode, so you know you're streaming something from YouTube, from Netflix, something you've got stored locally, then all of them support H.264, H.269 and VP9, which is great. However, one difference between these three is that the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1 does not support hardware decoding of AV1. You do find that in the Dimensity 9000 and you find that in the Google Tensor. Now, I read some of the comments of my video. Some people are pretty upset about that. My take on it is, is that actually AV1 isn't yet here in the prime time. All of these streaming services will also stream alternative formats. So is that a problem now? Not really. Some people are saying, yes, but I want future proofing. So if I buy a device now, I want it to be able to work for three, four years and know that when AV1 does finally come out, prime time, my device can uh, cope with it. That's a valid point. Though, as I've said, none of the streaming companies are ever going to block off streaming access to a bunch of different devices with that you know computers laptops tablets or smartphones because they want you to be able to stream smart tvs you know all these plug-in devices you know roku's and google uh, stuff chrome stuff you can you, they want you to be able to watch the videos because that's why you're paying the subscription fee or that's why you're watching it and you're supporting their advertising so for me i don't see it as too much a negative point at this time however that future proofing idea it has some merit and finally, let's just look at the 5G modems. Now, the best modem, without any doubt, is the one that's found in the Snapdragon 8 Generation 1. It's an inbuilt modem and it supports 5G with sub 6 and millimeter wave, no problem whatsoever. When you move over to the Dimensity 9000, you've also got a 5G modem. It supports sub 6, but it doesn't support millimeter wave. And then when you go over to the Google Tensor, it's using Samsung's 5G modem. It does support sub 6 and millimeter wave. However, it's an external modem. So three di very different configurations of modems here. It really does depend again on what the 5G rollout is like in your area. And whether, first of all, you've even got 5G. I mean, where I live in this actual moment here, there is no 5G coverage whatsoever. And so that doesn't really bother me. Uh, three, four, five years down the road again, future proofing. Is it going to be a sure? Well, yes, if you know that 5G is coming to your area and you want to start using that, then that would be something that you need to consider. However, of course, millimeter wave. Uh, is that really going to roll out? I see the rollout of millimeter wave certainly going to be much slower than the rollout of uh, sub six. So you get 5G in all of them, external modem in the Google Tensor incorporated in the other two, but no millimeter wave. Again, a factor when you make your choice. Okay, that's it. So what can we say about all of this? What we can basically say is the Google Tensor, as I said at the time it was released, Google are gambling big on the machine learning part. And if that's something that you need for the photography and the videography and the kind of you know, offline dictation and voice recognition, then that is certainly a good processor. And it's not slow by any means, of course, it is still a fast with the Cortex-X1 in there. It's still a fast processor. In fact, two Cortex-X1 cores in there. However, it is now behind what is coming out from uh, other companies. When it comes to the MediaTek and to the Snapdragon, it looks like on paper that the MediaTek is an absolutely amazing chip this year. It's got absolutely everything. The only thing is missing really is that millimeter wave support for 5G. Other than that, in terms of CPU, GPU, uh, AI learning and video decode, it's just got about just about everything that you could want. And of course, the Snapdragon in itself is an excellent processor. And of course, that 5G is the best 5G modem that you can get there in that one. So, which one are you going to choose? Are you even going to wait now to see what the Exynos is going to be like, that fourth one that we're missing? Now, the good thing is we have choice, and that is the great thing. You may choose one over the other, and that's absolutely fine. The point is you've got what to choose. It's not like where there's just one smartphone manufacturer and one type of processor. You either like it or you don't. You choose what you want. You choose the phone that you want from the company that you want with the features that you want at the price point that we want and you pay your money and then you've got a choice. And that's the great thing about the Android ecosystem. That choice means that you are free to pick what you want and not what you're told that you should have.
Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like these kind of videos, well, stick around by subscribing to the channel. Don't forget you can follow me on Twitter, at Gary Explains, and I also have a newsletter that covers everything I'm doing here on Gary Explains, everything I'm doing over on Android Authority. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address. You won't get any spam, but you will get the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.